Here at CES, one of the biggest topics of conversation is digital health and how technology is changing the way technicians in the field, doctors, nurses, everyone is doing their jobs. Joining me to talk about this is Dr. Jesse Ehrenfeld, the immediate past president of the AMA. Jesse, thank you. Oh, thanks for making time to chat with me today. I know that uh, digital health has been a big topic of conversation uh, and how technology is changing the way the medical field is doing its work. What have you been observing over the last few years? Well, there's a lot of excitement for digital tools, AI. You can't get through a day without somebody asking me about the AI impact on healthcare and medicine and what's gonna mean for all of us. And certainly here at CES, right, where there's all this buzz about new products, there's a lot of interest in how digital health tools can help scale capacity, make access easier, power decision-making at the point of care. And so while there's a lot of excitement for those things, and I hear that from physicians all over the country, there's also an ounce of skepticism. Oh yeah, a little bit of fear too. There is, there is, because we've been sold things before that didn't quite work out so well, and the technology was more of a burden than an asset. And that's where we have to have the right regulatory framework, the right standards, the right validation to make sure that the tools that you and I are using as consumers here at CES, or on the professional side in the care delivery process actually work for everybody involved. Every month when the Department of Labor numbers come out, healthcare is really at the top of the list of where, where people are being hired. But we also have reported often that there is a shortage of nurses, shortage of doctors, and even medical technicians. What do they need, what do people need to know to get into those fields, especially in this new age of technology? Well, it's a great time to be in healthcare on the one hand because there's incredible demand. We do not have nearly enough doctors, physicians, pharmacists, dentists, anybody, right? The demand is exploding. But at the same time, it's tough, right? Because the pressures on working in the delivery system are not going away. There is an endless line of patients that need care. We have not been able to keep up with the demand as population growth. We have an aging physician population, an aging nursing population, and that's making it harder and harder for patients like you and I to get into the, the care that, that we need. So one of the solutions that I'm excited about is of course, digital products to scale the capacity. And that's why when I talk about AI in healthcare, I talk about augmenting intelligence not artificial intelligence, because really the concept should be, let me have a tool that can make me three times as efficient. They can allow me to see 10 patients instead of two. Right. They can allow you to access the specialist that you need without going through six steps and a crazy journey in a maze to end up at three times the wrong place. And you know, I brought it up and you brought, about, brought it up to that skepticism and the fear. So people are always afraid that maybe it's gonna take away their job. Do you see it more augmenting the work that a doctor does, a nurse does? Yeah, so AI will never replace physicians or nurses, but physicians and nurses who use AI are someday going to replace those who don't. And we are seeing clinical AI companies come into the marketplace with exciting tools that can really support those workloads I mean, in really interesting ways. Um, 20 to 30% of US physician practices today are using AI, right? But it's all back-end operation stuff. It's supply chain, scheduling, prior authorization, dealing with insurance companies. The really exciting things that'll make it easier to interact with patients, I think, is coming. There's a big focus on that here at CES, obviously. And for the patient, trying to understand, hey, this is good, I think that is also a little fearful because people like that one-on-one. -on -one. We're talking one-on-one -on -one and I can hear you and you can hear me. People worry about the impact on yeah. our relationship as a patient with my physician, my care team. What is that going to be if there's an AI intermediary? Um, physicians worry about that a lot too. And I think we have to make sure that we use these tools in ways that work for everybody. And I don't think we know exactly the solution today. And you talk a little bit about policy here at CES on a panel. What do you think needs to be done to make sure that this is being done in a thoughtful way with some guardrails? Well, the, the trick is having the right balance, right? We need the regulatory certainty so that companies can bring products in the marketplace that are safe and effective, but we don't want to stifle innovation and not have the American public benefit from exciting things that are happening across the globe. Uh, the FDA, the framework for you know, approving drugs and medicines uh, that was set up in the 60s and 70s, that does not translate well to the digital era. So everybody recognizes that we need to do something different, but nobody's entirely sure what that new framework should be. And you know, you mentioned, um, you know, like research and medicine, right? That's one of the things that AI 
you know, a lot of people are saying this could be good ways to get breakthroughs in cancer, fighting cancer. There's already exciting work going on in the pharma space around drug development using AI tools and algorithms to try to design molecules that we think might, you know, act on certain targets. Uh, there's all sorts of interesting computational biology that I don't fully understand that's really uh, going to, I think, power some of those sort of ways to bring new medicines in the marketplace. Uh, there are ways to accelerate clinical trials. There are ways to identify patients who would benefit from the therapies, all sorts of really exciting things that are happening in digital health that are a little bit outside of the direct care delivery process. So bottom line is don't be afraid of it. <laughs> Keep, know that it's here to stay. And if you're looking for work in the field, there's plenty of it. Plenty of it. I will say, though, in closing that you got to be careful with snake oil. There are a lot of things out there that um, don't do what they say they might. Um, and so figuring out what works what doesn't work as a consumer or as a professional, I think is going to be an important challenge for all of us across the country. I always like that good cautionary warning. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure, my pleasure. Thanks for having me.